What do we know about this? We know that an independent regulator for the game inches closer as the Football Governance Bill is introduced to Parliament today. Now, I know you've got strong views Mm -hmm. on this, Simon. This has been deemed an historic day for English football, but... The big question is, what will the realistic outcome of this be? Is it going to be a game changer to reign in the Wild West or is it a toothless waste of time? Or is it a vehicle for votes in what is, after all, an election year? What do you think it is, Simon? Because no matter what, this thing is coming. This thing is on us today. Yeah, it is. And it's been packaged in a certain way. And it's almost like that TV show back in the 1970s um, where Jesus of Nazareth was on the cross looking down, saying, forgive them, Lord, they know not what they've done. The, the, the idea that we need over-regulation of this game and governance to step into a scenario where it starts to strangle the game is ridiculous. If you look but at what's football's that, allowed it to happen. If you, yeah, exactly right. Precisely that. And incompetence and inefficiencies. The real battle is about distributions about more money being paid into the pyramid and why the independent regulator has value to me is because it can be used as an opportunity for Rick Parry and Trevor Birch to make up for the sins of the imbeciles that went before them that couldn't bridge the gap between what the Premier League was becoming and what they needed to get from it. So the battle about distribution is a valid one. The idea that a brilliant sport with a brilliant set of leagues that dominates world football, that in 1985 had nine games being broadcast on terrestrial TV, had £1.3 million as its broadcast deal, had empty stadiums and football violence off the, off the, off the scale, now has billions coming into the game, is the world's most powerful league and some of the best football teams and best managers and best individuals playing in it, has 320 games being broadcast live every season, has football stadiums that's like shining new pins, but has a few challenges, is somehow broken and needs a bunch of regulators to come in and strangle the life out of it, which is what regulators tend to do in dynamic industries, is bloody stupid. But it's brought it upon itself and it's being dressed up as some fan-led revolution. OK, be careful what you wish for because there's a distinct possibility you might get it. Yes, but here's the thing though, Simon. The key moment, surely, was the morning you and I were on with Danny Murphy and we were talking about the big six breaking away, the Super League. There and then they killed themselves. And this is why this thing is happening, correct or incorrect? mm, This is why this thing got some more traction in the media. It was already being run by David Bernstein and other people previously to that, and it got got some more energy, it got some more traction, it got some more focus. But that brought about a fan-led review, which brought about a regulator. And I understand that, and I understand to some extent that the energy that got put behind it, if you produce a fan-led review, then you'll get outcomes that are specifically about what the fans think should happen with football. And of course, of course I get it. Of course I don't think that football is is designed and created inside boardrooms. I'm a football fan, firstly, yeah. and a, a football investor, secondly. Right. right. So with that in mind, I'm not stupid, but you also have to look at the reality of what is broken. What What, what is the panacea that you think a regulator is going to bring? Do you think a regulator would stop Mel Morris from owning a football club? No, they wouldn't. Do you think that a regulator um, controlling the way that football starts to morph into something that becomes over-regulated? Because regulators do one thing. They regulate. That's the very nature of what they do. And you've got this brilliant industry that's made a few missteps that needs to reconstitute itself. And And the flip side of that is is how can it get distribution? Nobody, let me tell you something, be clear, nobody in football wants a regulator, really. Rick Perry don't want a regulator, and neither does Trevor Birch, but what they want a regulator for is to use it as a, as a leverage to get the Premier League to come to the table to distribute more revenues, because they don't want to. And neither would you if you were in the Premier League. But Simon, I hear what you're saying, but when you look at the six key points, can you argue with any one of them? Number one, give fans a greater voice in the running of their clubs. What's wrong with that? Well, it depends what you think that voice should be. Fan because, engagement. Well, fan engagement exists. You already have fans so vociferous. You have fans coming on this show and issuing um, uh, manifesto demands to football clubs like Tottenham Hotspur. You have fans sitting down with owners of football clubs. Jim Radcliffe walks through the door. What's the first thing he does? Engages with the fans. Do you want fans in a boardroom? No, you bloody don't. No, you don't. But you don't want owners doing what they like when they like. I remember going out to Malaysia to interview Vincent Tan, who said, I want I want Cardiff to change from blue to red. Well, Vincent, they won't, so don't but do that's it. Just, but that's a silliness. It's like back in the day, the Alams wanted to change the name to Hull Tigers or something. And what happens in the end is common sense our prevails. A fans, fans key to the game uh, are the central And by the, the way, game. when Vincent Tan changed the kit to red, Cardiff got promoted, didn't they? Didn't matter, they weren't having it. No, fine, and what happened? It was a major own goal by and Vincent, and he knows that. And what happened? They, they reverted to type, and Cardiff right. went back to their traditional blue. N- number two, promote financial sustainability, and we'll have the ability to find clubs up to 10% of their turnover for non-compliance. What is sustainability? Hallelujah. What is sustainability? 
ultimately, I do think, I absolutely agree there needs to be more governance. There I you absolutely, go. I absolutely agree there should be better structures. And I, I, it makes me die with embarrassment on behalf of the FA. They're sitting on the sideline cheering this song, these bleeding idiots. They were supposed to be the de facto <laughs> regulator of the game. They're going, let's all get an independent regulation. What, what are you doing then? Because you, you won't have a fight with the Premier League because you want international fixtures and you want the players available to it and you want the FA Cup to, f- to come alongside the Premier League. That's how poor you are. OK. Number three, ensure breakaway closed shop competitions such as the European Super League will be blocked. Thank God for that. We don't no. want to see that again. We're, so we want monopolies, do we? No, but we don't want to see we a, want a European monopolies. Super we, League we want, head we, again. We want no competitive... Involving le- English clubs. No, we want the European Super League insofar as it was a concept that had real legs to it in the longer game to have meritocracy attached to it. We don't want greedy clubs being greedier. They're all greedy. Every football club is greedy. It wants more money. And if you, if you, if you qualify greed as being able to try and get the maximum you can out of something, then we're all greedy. Okay. Okay, number four, implement strengthened owners and directors tests. Thank God for that. Look at Barry. No more Steve no, Dales. Good. But, but, look, the Steve Bale, D- Dale situation is often a, a, a rock to fling at the yard ideal. Steve Dale is an exception. He's an aberration, and then you have to look at the reality of what he was al- allowed to achieve. For Steve Dale, you've got Mel Morris. Right? So Mel Morris is the perfect blueprint of an owner, massively financially well healed, Derby City football fan and committed to being involved in the game. Who could have ever legislated for the idea that Mel Morris would either run out of money or appetites? You know, the bottom line is, do you want investment into sport? We've got the most investable league in the world. So what we're going to do, kill that in the exchange for a bit of balance, a bit of common sense. It'll settle down. But right now what we've got is a revolution rather than an evolution. I'll keep this to the final point at this stage. They have to be equipped with backstop powers to impose a new deal on financial distributions. Oh, yeah. Don't you remember backstop when it was being mooted around about Brexit, about the, the border in the Northern Ireland Sea? Backstop this, backstop that. Careful with backstop and what it actually means. Yes, it needs to have some teeth, because if it doesn't have some teeth, then the EFL are negotiating with their pants around their ankles and their chins hanging out. They need to have some <laughs> form of credibility in the discussion. But this, this independent regulator... The deal for in distribution will be done. If I'm the Premier League, do you know what I'm going to do the deal? When I'm walking up to the court steps. That's what you do in life. You, walk, you settle on the door of the court because we don't live in a moral world where you're supposed to help your neighbour. You said, and you agreed with me at the start there, football allowed for this to happen. Did. Incompetence. So this is why we've got it. And that's right. That's This, why, and this that's, is why we've got it. And that's why football needs to be careful what it does to itself. You've got a situation now where you've got a PGML that implemented VAR, which, is a, which was a good idea in a bad way, which is being implemented prop- incorrectly, which is damaging the game. You've then got uh, this financial regulation coming in, which will damage the game. If we're not careful, these are existential threats to the value of this game. These are dangerous times, but interesting ones. And it's about how significant operators within the game react to it, rather than the background noise that politicians are making. <laughs> You're on farm, aren't you? Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.